Hey Mama Llamas, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Anomaly, but you can call me Allie for sure, of course. And today I'm going to be demonstrating just how you can make The Sims 4 more fun and interesting without mods. Uh, because I do be using a lot of mods, but however, I will be recommending some mods just in case you want to check them out. Um, they are definitely not necessary for you to enjoy The Sims 4, but a lot of them do add just a sprinkle of realism. Um, I'm sure most of the Sims community knows by now that The Sims 4 gameplay is just lacking and the depth and richness is just not there. Um, so let me know if these tips work for you or which ones you are going to try out. Um, so the first tip I have for you guys is create detailed and rich backstories for your sims. Even if you aren't a storyteller, you can still add some basic information to your sims backstory that will give them, you know, like a whole bunch of character and uniqueness. If you're just playing with your sim and like you're not really knowing who they are or where they come from, it's kind of hard to make this into fun when you have nothing to really work with. So for example, a lot of people doing the 100 baby challenge just go in straight with their matriarch and just view it as you know, like a regular old Sims challenge, which is totally okay, but because I added an in-depth storyline to my matriarch for the 100 baby challenge, I'm finding that um, like every little thing she does can impact and change uh, the story that I gave her. It's unfortunate that the Sims 4 lacks story and depth, but the fortunate thing is we can create those stories for ourselves. The second tip I have is to try out different styles of gameplay. If you are a big generational simmer, like family style gameplay, try playing a bachelor sim um, who's maybe struggling with love and accepting their singleness. Um, if you are a single sim player, try playing with a big family that has an intricate backstory to each family member. I usually play with huge families, but sometimes starting out with one sim really allows me to get to know them better and flesh out the game. Uh, for what it is instead of focusing on my family's needs or careers. I only ever got to focus on the game's different qualities um, when I branched off and only played one sim. But my biggest warning is, okay, get ready, don't get into the habit of making one sim, getting them married, having them have a family, and then dying. Now, even though that can be the basis of what you do, make sure that you don't fall into that rut and make it your only gaming style because that was my style back in the sims 3 days and like i love the sims 3 it's super fun but i think i just got bored of doing that all the time like having a single sim getting them married having kids getting a career and then they die and then that's it you know what i'm saying so definitely don't fall into that rut this tip is probably one of my biggest ones and it is to not be afraid to include tragedies and drama into your game now this doesn't mean life for your sims has to be all sad and gloomy 24 7 but for example and this is your trigger warning this talks about suicide and alcoholism um, I had a current household back in the day before YouTube where one of my sim sons got married to the love of his life but he fell into a gambling addiction so they began to fight constantly and once they had their second child his wife actually suffered from postpartum depression and decided to end her life. Uh, my sim was then faced with the guilt of his wife's passing and started to drink heavily. Um, this went on for a while until he finally decided to go to therapy, but see, like, the thing is, the game didn't create any bit of this story. I did. And believe it or not, I cried, I laughed, I got angry. Like, when you put these realistic aspects of life into your game, you will get so freaking attached, I swear. Um, but it's good because you'll want to continue playing and reaching the light at the end of the tunnel. Now, I'm not saying you have to be that dark. That's just my preference personally, but definitely add a bit of tragedy and realistic events in your game because that will completely um, alter your sim story and their character. Next tip, if you have seasons, use the holidays to your benefit and better yet, um, add new holidays to your game. I have a video up now that shows you some of the custom holidays I have in my game uh, to kind of flesh out that realistic experience. So, um, Add a tree cutting holiday in the winter and and this is another thing take your sims to community lots 
there are so many lots to download on the gallery or I get a lot of mine from the Sims resource too. Um, I've seen flea markets, uh, tree farms, pumpkin patches, mechanic shops, gas stations. Um, these are only but a few lots that you could take your Sims out to and tell their stories through them. I like taking my Sims out to coffee shops and inviting their moms or their dads or their family members to them or a date maybe and just letting them talk over a cup of coffee. The little things like that I just love so much. Another thing with holidays is if you don't have seasons just pretend. I'm pretty sure you uh, get a Christmas tree with the free holiday pack so you could definitely pretend it's Winterfest in the dead of summer and add gifts, decorations, whatever it takes for your sims to have the Winterfest they've dreamed of. Uh, purchase gifts uh, you believe your sims would purchase and designate them for somebody else. One of my female sims loves to knit so I had her husband build her a little shack uh, decorated with knitting stuff and her very own couch to knit. Uh, even though I obviously built it you gotta like put your imagination to it and I just believe that he built it you know there's no other way. Um, another tip is to play with save files. Save files are a great way to experience a Sims world in much more detail with more community lots for your Sims to go to and better houses to live in. I will link a few down below in the description. Personally, I think Simlessies has to be my favorite, but if you have another favorite, go ahead and let me know. I would love to check out some other save files. And last but not least, rotational gameplay will save your life. So what rotational gameplay is, is when you rotate between households in your game and play different stories while doing so. So for example, I had a couple who had four children and when they all moved out, I played each child again with different stories and rotated between them each sim week. This way, when you've been playing with a household for a while and you get kind of bored, you can just switch between families and start picking back up where they left off. This is legit the only way I play with big families I get so invested in everybody's stories um, that I can't wait to go on to the next household. Now I did want to give a few honorable mentions to both challenges and mods as well. So personally I'm not a big challenge girl. I like realistic stuff, family gameplay stuff, but there are so many challenges out there for you to try. If you're really bored and there's no hope for you, um, definitely try out some challenges. I'm going to put some in the description below. Low. and I also will put some of my most favorite mods down in the description as well. Um, Slice of Life really really adds um, a lot of realism to your game. A lot more mood lit, a lot more things for your sims to do. Kawhi Stacy is just an awesome mod creator in general so I will link some of her mods down below. Sacrificial mods always a good one. Um, there's some crazy ones out there but they will add a lot of stuff to your game. Um, what else? MC Command Center that definitely helps you out in the game as well. But the point of this video was just to let you know that you do not need mods to make The Sims 4 fun. I know that's that's what it seems like and in some aspects that is true, but there are different ways to make it fun as well. If you have any of your tips to make The Sims 4 fun as well, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you and don't forget to like the video and turn on your post notifications so you get notified whenever I post a new video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more Sims 4 videos. Bye y'all.